welcome to this week's preview show here at Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple joins me as we'll be looking ahead to another big game in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at last week's 2-1 win at Villa Park. We'll also be joined by first team coach Stephen Purchase. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to Sunday's game against Manchester City here at Vitality Stadium. Well, we're going to start back at last weekend and that 2-1 win at Villa Park. Let's take a look at the goals. King plays it out to the left and Fraser, who is on the left, and Harry Wilson on the right. Fraser left corner of the area, threads it in behind, Callum Wilson steals in, and he goes down under the penalty. challenge of Hilton. It's going to be a yellow card, I think. Is it? That's a penalty! Penalty to Callum Wilson and Bournemouth after 45 seconds! This, in the first minute, would absolutely be the way to do it. King against Heaton, and King does leave the Holt end in silence. Bournemouth lead on the road, Wilson won it, King converts from the spot, what a start. Douglas with a little step over, but straight to Harry Wilson. Chance to shoot, left foot, deflected! Harry Wilson, Premier League debut, Premier League goal! Bournemouth have two, took a huge deflection on the way past Heaton, but Harry Wilson will get it, and Bournemouth in dreamland at Villa Park, who are stunned. Grealish once more, he's running once more at Adam Smith to the top of the box, Douglas is going to crack it right foot in, what an effort and what a goal from Douglas! Well, goals from Joshua King and Harry Wilson there. Chris, it was a, a good afternoon if you're a Cherries fan, wasn't it? Very enjoyable afternoon, yeah. It was, uh, it was a funny afternoon, wasn't it? Because it, the start was unbelievably great. Uh, the best thing you can do at what was a really loud Villa Park. Anyone that was there, I've seen lots of comments from Cherries fans about how vociferous the Villa fans were. I think they were expecting it to be loud, maybe not as loud as it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole end were, were briefly shut up by uh, that two-goal lead early on. And actually, to be end, to, towards the end of the game, Bournemouth needed that, that cushion once Villa had got one back because Villa threw everything uh, at Bournemouth late on, defended really well. And, uh, you know, the manager said afterwards, they're the situation sometimes when a silly mistake or just a lack of concentration and all, all of a sudden you let three hard-earned points slip away so yeah it was everything was blocked everything was cut out Aaron Ramsdale in goal commanded his box brilliantly um, and it was yeah I, th I felt I felt in the end Villa could probably say they their second half performance they probably deserve something from the game but I think Bournemouth for the the endeavour and the sort of dogged nature of the the last 15 minutes um, probably deserved to hang on to the points and there was some great football played you know particularly in the first half um, you know the, the two goals that were created. Um, oh no, Harry Wilson's got a bit of a bit of a nudge off Tyrone Mings, but um, still uh, he had a lot of bright moments as well. So all in all, yeah, what a what a really positive day. And I think we can probably all agree that last year the away form could have been a little bit better. So to get that first away win of the season so early on is is important, isn't it? Yeah, you only counter that by saying Bournemouth also won their first away game last season, of course, that's as true, well at West Ham. <laughs> but let's let's look on a positive and say that's going to be the the kickstart. I mean, with Harry Wilson in the team, um, it looked a you know much better balance going forward. Callum Wilson, Joshua King, Ryan Fraser were all much more involved. Um, obviously, you know, Phil Billing had to go off at half time, which had the potential to sort of upset the apple cart because he'd had a good first half, but Eddie was left with no choice at all. Um, unfortunately, I think Philip Billing just got a little bit carried away with one or two tackles. He was very lucky to yeah, stay on. Yeah, he was a bit lucky. He wasn't was lucky he? to stay yeah. on, let's be honest about it. Um, there was a, a, a blatant yellow card tackle straight after he got booked. So, actually, when you talk about things falling in Bournemouth's favour, so, so sometimes away from home last season, not much fell for them. I would say that fell for them. <coughs> excuse me in that in that game to be able to um, keep 11 men on the pitch but credit to Andrew Sermon who came on you know not the same type of player as Philip Billing at all um, 
came on and did well in there. Slotted right in, didn't Slotted he? Slotted in, got, got enable Bournemouth to get control of the ball and, um, you know, does a lot of his unseen hard yards, which you said many times before. So, yeah, to get the away form, uh, the away win up and running, particularly with City coming here as well, because if you if that had been another point, it's going to be hard to get much from City this weekend. All of a sudden, if you're looking at two points from the first three games, including two newly promoted teams, you're thinking, oh, probably needed a couple more from there. But I think four, most Cherries fans would be happy with four. And a word on Harry Wilson as well. You said his shot, it got a deflection of Tyro Mings, but it was his goal nonetheless, and he's off the mark now. Yeah, and he, he had a go a couple of times, didn't he? One went sailing over the bar. He scored a lot of goals from range last year for Derby as well. So that's going to be uh, it's going to be a good weapon really I think he's obviously not afraid to have a go I'm sure the manager's given him license to have a go uh, and obviously we see his radar is pretty good um, great boost for him as well I thought he did really well he just cramped up a little bit in the second half he got a bit of a dead leg and I think the combination of the two things uh, meant that he couldn't finish the game but he'll get stronger obviously with with minutes as it goes on but I think yeah Eddie Howe spoke about why he wasn't included here for the first game, that he hadn't really trained with the lads and it was asking a bit much to throw him in for that Sheffield United game. Um, but yeah, I think Bournemouth fans got certainly more than a glimpse of what he's going to bring to the team in David Brooks' absence. And you said as well it was, that it was a tough second half and, and they got their goal, but but they really <coughs> ground it out for the last 15 minutes, didn't they? Yeah, real real battling performance. And Aaron Ramsdale, again, I think I said it after the game or I tweeted it after the game that you wouldn't know he played two Premier League games. I mean, just the, I spoke about it last week, the confidence he's got, um, you know, in front of the whole end, that whole end holds 12, 13,000 people. They're baying for blood, effectively. Villa were, it wasn't an onslaught, but there was a lot of pressure coming Bournemouth's way. Bournemouth had a couple of opportunities to break away and, and make the game safe. Um, but it was there was quite a bit of pressure. Um, Steve Cook and Nathan Ake you know, marshaled things superbly in front. Jefferson Lerma got through another absolute barrel load of work, um, you know, in, in a physically punishing game. And we've got to mention Charlie Daniels, of course, who hadn't really played. He played 80 minutes, didn't he, in pre-season, but hadn't played a full 90. Um, <laughs> I spoke to him this morning ahead of the weekend and he said he was he was blowing by the end that is for sure so he did put in a good shift he put in a great shift and Andrew Sermon hasn't had a lot of minutes either so and neither's Harry Wilson so you know when you look at the actually the amount of minutes that were on the pitch um, again it was a massive effort in and what was a very warm afternoon as well well you mentioned Steve Cooker and Nathan Ake there there was a really crucial block from Nathan Ake on the line just before half time and, and that would have been 2-1 going into the break and, and a completely different second half yeah that got overlooked a little bit I think by I think by Philip Billings sort of uh, the, the Philip Billing couple of minutes are just coming up to half time um, but yeah again Nathan Ake how many times we've we seen him clear one off the line he seems to always be in that right place his positional sense yeah, is terrific he always seems to be a step ahead of what's about to happen um, so yeah he's he started the season really strongly as well and as you say we talk about getting the breaks and one or two things falling Bournemouth's way again if it's if it's not going your way that goes past him and goes in but he was in the right place Absolutely. Well, a very positive result indeed. Another positive for the Cherries off the pitch this week was Lewis Cook's return to training. Let's take a look at how he got on. Okay, so just initially just working up towards me, just stretching your cards, guys, as you go. Simo! Well, the lads certainly working hard there. Now, as you may have noticed, we have been joined by first team coach Stephen Purchase. Stephen, thank you for joining us. We've just been talking about last week's win against Aston Villa. You must have been delighted with that one. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it was a tough place to go. Uh, first Premier League game back for, for them as well. So, um, yeah, we knew we knew what um, what was coming. I think obviously the start really, uh, really helped us, um, you know, dampen their crowd down a little bit. We obviously were, were very noisy at the start and um, yeah, great win, great application from the lads and, um, you know, something that hopefully we can um, carry on now into the next few games. And a tough place to go as well, because that was their first home game back in the Premier League and, and they'd been waiting for it for a long time. Yeah, I'd say the expectation around their place with, with the noise and, um, you know, you knew you were sort of walking into a real sort of carnival atmosphere for the first uh, part of the game. And I think the lads warmed up really well. I felt it felt good before the game. And, um, yeah, obviously early goals like that 
um, really can help uh, in in every way. And um, I thought, you know, throughout the game, generally we we competed very well. And um, you know, and especially the last sort of ten minutes of the game, um, I think we sort of really stepped up and uh, made sure we just made, finished off the game. Of course, Eddie and Jason are the ones perching you right down on the technical area, doing the pointing and looking animated, and sometimes looking a little bit worried. You and Simon Weatherston are up in the stands with the, the walkie-talkies and the headsets. That last 15 minutes, I mean, what, what are you what are you seeing? What are you radioing down? Because it was a, a bit of a, a heavy amount of pressure coming. There was a couple of lads who didn't have a lot of minutes in their legs. You're thinking, are they going to hang on here? What was your emotions washing on from the from the stands, and what were you relaying to the bench? Pretty much what you've said there. I mean, it was um, you know. You're a bit higher up, so you, you might get a chance to see stuff that's maybe happening over the other side of the pitch a little bit that that uh, pitch level can be can be harder. So yeah, just trying to um, give any information that that might help um, or things that might have uh, not got, got seen, but generally you say they're they're all they're always on it, and you're there for anything that obviously they might ask up to you to to maybe look at for for a, sp a period of time. So um, so yeah, it's a different emotion up there. Um, you know, trying to make sure you just try and keep a clear head, which would, is obviously tough sometimes. <laughs> would you rather be up there? Or would you rather be down on the cauldron of uh, you know where it's all happening and the emotions are running high? And Jason Tindall's probably getting any few yellow cards this season yeah, as well yeah. those new rules no I, I, that's my role I know that um, you know I'm up there for for that reason and um, yeah no it's um, you get a chance to see see the whole game and uh, say touchline can be very frantic and um, and maybe hard to always see everything but um, yeah no I, I enjoy I enjoy seeing it from up there and um, you know any any sort of little thing that might get seen that can can help then uh, obviously you feel like you're doing your job and a positive result last weekend. Another positive from this week was Lewis Cook back in training. That must be delighted for you. Must be delighted to see to see him back out there. Yeah, he's a he's a fantastic lad. He's he's worked you know obviously really hard to um, to get himself back back on the training field. And um, yeah, I think he's been waiting and feeling and pushing and wanting to get out there. And um, yeah, it was it was nice. It was going to take him a bit of time to um, to get up to sort of the actual match speed of it. His fitness was never going to be a problem because of uh, you know how he works and 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 what he wants to put into it so um so yeah really positive to see him back out there and from from the lads point of view and the, and the coach's point of view you know just having that competition back uh, the more players you've got out there fighting for for the place uh, obviously the bell you can have some great options and great difficult choices to make when he gets back fit on you because Jefferson Lerner and Phil Billing have, have looked a good partnership yeah. so far but they're obviously we know what they're like Andrew Sermon brings that calmness Lewis Cook that sort of bit of flair bit of creativity yeah. you can have some great options horses for courses in there you're gonna have to make a tough decisions yeah I think um, that's that's the beauty of you know the squad that you, you're trying to build and um, you know to actually have everyone fit and available and you mentioned and, Dan Gosling either and, I mean, yeah, again, talking about being fit, you know, he's someone that, that drives. As they're all they're all different. I think the good thing is that they all have different qualities, and um, you know, to actually be able to have them all out there and and training and pushing each other would only be a good thing. And then obviously, then the manager has that choice, then which one to to put out there. But um, you know, they're all. They're all show great attitudes to, to the work and say they're, they're all different in, in their own way. And you mentioned Philip Billing there, we've had four other new signings as well. What have you made of, of the impact they've had coming into the squad and how have they settled in with the lads? I think they've settled in really well. I mean, you know, every club that you come from is different. I think um, that they're all going to have different habits from their previous clubs, but, um, you know, to to come in and you know to play as, as quickly as sort of um, obviously Phil has, um, it, it's been great. And um, again, he, he adds he adds a presence um, out there. He's he's done great on the ball. And again, you, you can still still there's a lot of scope still for him to get better as well. So um, and with the other lads that have come in, they're all jumping at the bit to, to wanting to get out there, show what they can do. And um, you know, again, once everyone's ready to go, it's uh, it's exciting. I guess we can't wrap up this section without asking about Manchester City, who are going to be on this pitch behind us on, on Sunday. Last season's game made headlines, I guess, for one or two of the wrong reasons, and that you had, what was it, no shots or the lowest ever amount of possession or something. Yeah. Um, it's a balance, isn't it, between playing a natural game, which is pace, power, get at them, but also, as West Ham showed, or your old club on the, the opening day of the season, you can get done five at home doing that. Yeah, and that's that's what Man City are. I mean, they're... Um they're an unbelievable team to, to put yourself up against and um, that's why we're in this league. It's, uh, you, you've got to try and find a way and um, you know we're all looking forward to, to doing that. It's a great opportunity for everyone to, uh, to have a go against one of the best teams in the world. So let's have a go. <laughs> well, it's certainly an exciting game to look forward to. Thank you very much for, for joining us, Stephen. We're going to turn our attention to, to that game against Manchester City now. So here's a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. Uh, we've got a, a slight hangover from last season still where we've got players that had long-term injuries that are still in that position. They were tight games. We lost 3-1 away. We were in the game until the last 20 minutes. Um, and then the game here was very tight. 
Uh, we lost by the odd goal, but we felt we were competitive without being uh, showing our, our best attributes in the game. But we managed to limit uh, limit sorry their um, their main strengths. Well, I think we know historically that if we perform at our very best, we've got a chance of beating anybody. I think that's been the story of our Premier League journey. We've had to play very, very well to get anything from the top the top teams. I don't think we'll be the only team to suffer a bad record against Manchester City in recent years. I think they're an outstanding team. And every time we've played against them, I think we've, I've said this before, but we've come for the pitch learning more about ourselves and what, what we have to do to grow and become better. I look at my bench enthusiastically to think that we can change games. And even last week, we uh, Dominic Solanke came on the, uh, against Aston Villa and made a real difference to the team. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in his pre-match press conference ahead of this weekend's game. Chris, as, as Stephen Purchase just said, it is going to be extremely tough out there tomorrow. Isn't it? Yeah, every City game has had something going on, hasn't it? Whether it's been Raheem Sterling's last-minute winner where he's sort of celebrating right behind us here into the City fans and then got sent off, didn't he, for celebrating... Um, you think of Charlie Daniels' wonder goal at like this end behind us as well. Last year, 18% possession, no shots for Bournemouth. The first home team ever to not have a shot in the Premier League. Or a uh, corner. Or a corner, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was trying to keep it positive there for a minute. You're throwing the negatives in. Um, but yeah, all, every City game, and of course, a couple of pumpings away from home as well, which is not the, you know not unfamiliar in the Premier League for any team. So yeah, City games have always been relatively... Um, incident packed if you like or talking point packed uh, I wouldn't expect this weekend to be anything different I'm not expecting a drab 1-1 draw let's put it that way um, the difficult Bournemouth have the difficult thing of their their style is one that can easily get unlocked that's the problem at the other end um, and so Eddie has always got this problem of how how gung-ho do you go how offensive do you go West Ham as you mentioned with Perchie, um, you know they went relatively offensive and got done 5-0 at home um, and you know VAR was involved there as well, um, so that can happen, and it you know it'll happen to teams this season. Uh, you just I think the biggest thing is you need City not to be on their day. You need to, them to be for some reason short. And at th this stage of the season, I'm not sure how short they're going to be. I think they're they're sort of warming up. They've had a couple of great results. Obviously the Tottenham VAR last minute heartbreak, if you like, last weekend. I'm sure left them smarting a little bit. Um, but you know Chelsea four 0 here last year. Manchester United needed a last minute winner here. Um, other teams have lost here. The big teams Arsenal, you know Liverpool. Um, have been beaten here as well so uh, yeah all in all um, if, if the big teams have an off day you've got a chance if the big teams are on it you need absolutely everything to go right to get your point and of course Manchester City are the one team now that Bournemouth haven't got a point from after getting a 0-0 against Spurs last season um, yeah City is still the one elusive point they're waiting for and of course, with, with City last year, we went five at the back, very defensive. That's something we, we did against Sheffield United as well. What sort of formation can we expect from Eddie this week? <laughs> God, I'm throwing hard, one at you it's there. It's hard to I? know, isn't it? I mean, the, uh, I, I can't see any team changes. I wouldn't have thought so. Um, the the 4 4 one, 1 you know, I think they only like to play three at the back usually when they're playing against a three. There'll be, a, there'll be time, you know, exceptions to that, but um, often Eddie, Eddie likes to match up and play a three. Um, City play four at the back, so therefore I would expect. Um, him to go four at the back again. Uh, I would think it'll be the same team if everyone's come through as they uh, as the, as we think they have. Um, you know, one or two guys pushing from the bench that will be looking to potentially get involved. But of course, Wednesday night League Cup game against Forest Green here as well. So you know, there'll be a number of the uh, the sort of fringy or, or bench players will get a chance. So yeah, I, I would expect the the four four one one again. I mean, that can be solid as well. That, that's not that's not gung ho. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, as you say, the 3-4-3 three, three can be interpreted as a five at the back when they haven't got the ball. Um, I actually can't remember what formation. I think, you, as you said, they went with the five, but I know they had six defenders in the team. I think Adam Smith was in the team as well. So it was a, a no Callum Wilson that day as well, which against City here last season, which can make a big difference because Joshua King and Callum Wilson aren't the same player when it comes to holding up the ball and, and offering an outlet and taking a bit of heat off the game from a defensive point of view. So uh, I think Callum, having Callum in the team will be you know, a big positive in terms of being able able to maybe take a bit of heat off them but yeah City are uh, yeah City are City they're quite good they are they are <laughs> quite good indeed and normally at this point of the show we we pick out the ones to watch but it's fair to say that with that City team there's not one individual player that's I mean Raheem Sterling's been in, in brilliant form but there's not one individual player that that you can really pick out and say he's yeah. the one to watch we know Raheem Sterling's got that history against Bournemouth even from back in his Liverpool days he didn't score here last season of course it was Mares who uh, who got the goal I mean if, when you look at City's team for example David Silva started one game and then he swapped with Bernardo Silva for the next game 
Aguero and Jesus have swapped, you know, so and that's in the two Premier League games they've been able to rotate. That's just picking out two positions. So we know what, what quality they've got. In terms of their new guys they've added, they've obviously added uh, Jao Cancelal, uh, Cancelal uh, in the last couple of weeks who uh, was on the bench. Um, and Rodri, the midfielder from Atletico Madrid as well, who uh, started and in the sort of Fernandinho role, if you like. I saw him in the Community Shield, actually. I was at Wembley for, for that game against Liverpool. I mean, he looked okay. He was, he looked at, you know, in the City team, he, he looked good. Anyone I think, uh, you know, they signed is going to be decent. But it is a very similar City team to last year. They, um, as the manager said this morning in his press conference, the problem is that they've got with their recruitment, um, it's such a small pool to pick from because the top players in the world are, are few and far between and a small number of clubs are going for all of them. So, yeah, it's, it's largely the same City team that we saw here um, last season. And in, in terms of our injury news, again, no fresh concerns, which will be pleasing for Eddie. Lewis Cook back in training, probably not ready for this weekend. and. And it looks like it's it's a bit more positive. Yeah, and you know, 90 minutes in Charlie Daniels' legs again. I said to him this morning, I'm pretty sure he's pleased to get 90 minutes in his legs before facing Manchester City. Of course, you know, his wonder goal, as we said last season, I didn't mention it to him because I didn't want to keep dragging it up. But when a moment like that, you know, that, that's the kind of moment you need against City. When, when if they're on their day, you need a moment of magic like that. Um, so yeah, Charlie Daniels being back fit. Andrew Sermon got some minutes as well, although he probably you know would be back on the bench I think uh, this weekend as well. And you know, Lewis Cook is the is the big positive of the week really from a, a training point of view. I think even the League Cup game is going to come too soon. It's a bit of a shame. Maybe the I, uh, he's probably a couple of two or three weeks away. The next round of the League Cup possibly. I don't know what, how far away that is, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting closer for Lewis Cook. He's worked very hard and I think Jerry's fans will be excited to have him back and also the manager's going to have a tough selection dilemma when he is back. He certainly is. Well, that's all we've got time for today. If you want to have a go at predicting the score for this weekend's game, and then you can go over to the Mansion website and have a go at that. You can win two hospitality tickets to our game against Everton if you do come out on top. Last week's winner was Mark from Bournemouth and he'll be watching in style on Sunday. Thanks for not asking me for a prediction, by the way, this week. <laughs> I did no, do no, that no, on no, purpose. No, no, no. No. Well, everyone. <laughs> I um, think it'll be a good game. <laughs> a good game. There we go. If you are coming on Sunday, make sure you keep an eye around the ground for the mansion carts. They will be giving away free cherry flavoured ice cream. So do keep your eyes out for that. Thank you very much for joining us today. We'll see you next time.